Hi, and welcome to my talk about Artificial's A-Lab Suite and our use of high-res bio Solario. I'm Jeff Budd, Head of Engineering at Artificial. I've been with Artificial since the beginning of the company, a little over three and a half years. My background prior to Artificial is in robotics, automation, and manufacturing at Google and Google X, working on mobile robots and Google Glass. At Artificial, we're building a software platform called A-Lab Suite. A-Lab Suite is focused on making it easier for humans of all skill levels to use laboratory automation. We've been building A-Lab Suite since late 2019. The problem we're trying to solve with A-Lab Suite is that lab automation is complex. Going from scientific intent to running process on an automated system takes too long and requires too many experts. When we talk to customers, some of the questions we hear from them are, how do I translate a request from my limbs to something that will run on a work cell? Where is the process defined? How can my scientist actually run this work cell? Or how do I get my data from instruments back to my ELN? And in most cases, the only answer they have is talk to a domain expert. But our official, we think it doesn't have to be this way. We believe that A-Lab Suite as a unifying platform across the different domains of the lab will facilitate ease of use for all users. In short, A-Lab Suite allows users to go from a scientific request, be that an experiment or a run, to data in a single platform that is accessible to anyone. To go a bit deeper into how we accomplish this, I'll walk through the steps from a request to process results. In A-Lab Ops, we aggregate all of the process requests, either through connectivity to a LIMS or by having users directly enter a request in A-Lab, and display them such that they can be filtered by process, sample type, or other metadata. We then batch these requests, either automatically based on metrics provided by the user, or by allowing the user to manually select which request to run. The user can then schedule individual requests or batch requests. These requests include all the manual and automated work that is required for a particular process. Once scheduled, we use A-Lab assistance to guide a user, whether that user is an operator or a scientist, through all of the steps necessary to set up the automation system for a run. This guiding is done using our digital twin of the laboratory. Once the user has completed setup, A-Lab Suite starts the automation process on the system. As the system runs, A-Lab Suite pushes the relevant data back into the cloud in a consolidated record format. That's a mouthful, so I'm going to go over some of these steps in more detail. The user's entry point to A-Lab Suite is our web app. The app allows users to select the views of automation systems that are relevant to them, be that the current run status, the equipment state, or process results. Because it's a web app, it can be used from whatever device makes the most sense for the task at hand. A tablet when at the work cell, maybe a laptop at your desk, or if you're at home and you just want to know what the state of the system is, you could bring it up on your phone. One of the views in our lab build in our app is our lab builder. The lab builder allows the users themselves to construct a digital twin of their lab. In the lab builder, we have a library of equipment that we have layered with what we call common sense lab physics, where plates are allowed to go, which hotels attach to which mounts, how a robot moves, or even the way a plate needs to be oriented. To use the lab builder, you drag and drop equipment from our library with features to assist in intelligently snapping parts together, thus building out a complete digital twin of your lab environment. Another view in the app is the assistant builder. In the assistant builder, this is where a user describes the manual work that is required for a process to be correctly set up or cleaned up. The description of work is made in a natural language using our markdown language and the digital twin from the lab builder to associate steps with particular pieces of equipment or labware. In the example shown here, we're describing the operations to load a Hamilton Vantage with black conductive tips. In the Assistant Builder, you can also create associations of quantities for loading the system. For example, a four to one ratio of tips to samples or calculate the required reagent quantities based on the number of plates. Once a user has described their lab and protocols in A-Lab Suite, they'll want to actually run the process. The view for scheduling and running is our A-Lab Ops page. In A-Lab Ops, a user can view requests, which again are populated either from the LIMS or an ELN or manually. In this particular example, they were populated from Benchling. A user can manually batch these requests or have our dynamic scheduler automatically batch them based on heuristics for time or cost savings. Once batched, the request can be scheduled, inclusive of the manual and automated work required. On the top right of the screen, you can see a blue button above the running process. This is telling the user that they need to complete a manual step to get the system loaded or unloaded. 
The notification here could be coupled with a Slack or SMS as well, so they don't have to come necessarily directly to the UI to see that there's a manual step. The manual steps are completed by a user through what we call a lab assistance. The video here shows a user being guided on how to set up samples on a Hamilton Vantage deck with a digital checklist and a digital twin highlighting the relevant locations. Embedded media can also be shown here for use when more detail is required. In addition to these setup instructions, you can configure assistance to prompt users to record lot numbers of reagents, which will be reflected in the results of the process. This, you know, and to increase the uh, traceability of all of the reagents. After the setup is, of the assistant is completed, ALAB Suite can then start the process on the automation equipment. When the process is running, ALAB can surface the current state of the lab, whether any instrument is in error, or if a system is waiting for a human-driven process. This allows the user to monitor the status of the lab without being physically present. Shown here is a PF400 in a team member's garage in California, with a digital twin being accessed by another team member in Austin, Texas. After the process is complete, you can view a results record of everything that happened. In this results record, you can see all of the requests that were batched together, all the inputs and outputs, the lot numbers of reagents, and any errors or warnings that may have come from the automation system. In this example, on the bottom left, you can see all of the stream of events that were related to this particular batch. In the top there, the plates were moved out of the incubator and into long-term storage. And we have associated with that a timestamp and the person who performed the actual action. So back to the original problem statement. You can see how we could use all of these tools within a lab suite to let a user go from scientific request to process results in one system. An example customer using a lab suite to do this is Bob Ganser at Bean Therapeutics. Bob has an automation request system where scientists generate requests and benchling. The requests then need to be run on an automated processes on his work cell, which in this case is powered by Hi-Res Bio Solario, and then feed those results back into benchling. Before we deployed a lab suite at Beam, Bob had a system that worked for running a science, but it was very fractured and it required users to know like a lot of details about the system that were not really relevant to their jobs. Here's a short video of Bob talking about how the a lab suite works at Beam. So this is kind of how it works for us at Beam. We've got at the beginning, the Benchling connectivity for everything. So as orders are placed in Benchling, they seamlessly sync to ALAB. As they're batched within ALAB during the ops process, all of that is fed back in a continuous loop and connectivity to Benchling so that then order statuses are changed, inventory is changed, metadata is tracked. It then connects seamlessly into our high-res Solario system and places that order for us so we're not even having to go into Solario. It'll then take us through to the assistant where then we can load up the devices. And what's really cool is then once you hit finish on the assistant in ALAB, it's actually going to start the instrument. So you don't even have to go into Solario to then start everything um, to get your data. So again, we're going all the way from experimental design connecting it all the way through execution and data generation all in one spot. So now that you have an understanding of how ALAB Suite works as a whole, we'll dive into the specifics of how ALAB and Solario work together to drive automation. To start, when a user batches or schedules a job in ALAB, the first thing we need to do is understand the state of the work cell. We do this by using the Solario Services API to query the inventory and mirror this state into our ALAB digital twin. Once the state of the system is known, we can determine where the plates will be loaded based on the requested protocol and the existing inventory, and then kick off an ALAB assistant to guide the user with the digital twin in order to set up the work cell correctly for the job, so loading in the plates, adding the reagents, et cetera. Once the user confirms that the system is loaded, ALAB suite creates an order within Solario, including the plate locations, for this required process. After the order is created, ALAB Suite starts the order on Solario and passes along the relevant protocol variables. Uh, in Bob's particular case, we actually write a file to the host system that Solario is running on, and the process reads that file, and that's how we get the protocol variables in. This isn't great, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Once the order is running, ALAB monitors the data stream and passes along the relevant information and events back up to the user in ALAB. So this is where we can see things like plates moving or the actual status of equipment. And upon completion of the order, 
ALF Suite can update the digital twin, the resulting inventory status from Solario, show the user how to unload the job using an unload assistant in the digital twin. And then once the user confirms that these plates have been unloaded in the digital twin, ALAP Suite can complete the order in Solario, thereby allowing Solario to unload the plates from its inventory system as well. So this is how Solario and ALAP Suite work together to drive automation. Uh, it's a really great partnership. Some of the things that, about Solario that excite us uh, at, here at Artificial are you know, just the, the services API really allows us to talk to Solario and the work cell in a way that a lot of other schedulers don't. And we find that great. In particular, the event streaming, giving us this live real-time data back about what's happening. This is you know, amazing for having our digital twin be a place where a user can go to see everything that's happening in their system. And then some of the future things we're excited about working on is building within Solario and Artificial Suite, or sorry, in ALAB, a way for scientists to come in and build out cherry picking methods on liquid handlers uh, just using the ALAB Suite UI, uh, making our assistants better so that when an assistant needs a user to check that a particular nest in a piece of equipment is empty, we can have the assistant call a method within Solario to open that nest and or open the door and present the nest to the user so that they can confirm it's empty. And so we can use the Solario API to do that without having to write a full process in Solario to just open a nest. And then that earlier step where I talked about where we're writing a file to make sure that we get the process parameters and variables in, in this new version of Solario that's coming out, processes can be fully parameterized so that we can just use just the API of Solario in order to create a process with these variables in it. And so we're super excited about being able to not have to leave the Solario services API in order to make the process run correctly. Thank you very much for listening to our talk. If uh, this seems like something that is interesting to you, please drop us a line at hello at artificial.com. Thanks again.